Hey, we're here today with Kara. She's my model for today. Uh, look at this great face. Um, I have a big job ahead of me. How am I going to make her look better? You already look so good now, Kara. Uh, she wears her hair very, very short. And, you know, she's a natural blonde. She's not that dark. She's a level seven, light brown, um, and very coarse, thick, curly hair. You know, this texture is great. It's very strong hair. But what I want to do, you see she's got just a little bit of blonde left on those tips. I want to make her super blonde. I want to really play up the front of her hair. This is the longest part is the bang. So I'm going to make her nice and blonde with lots of vanilla blonde, very pale highlights. On the rest of the hair, you see how short it is. Um, I can't highlight all of this. You see how, because I mean, I'm going to make this even shorter. But I am going to do a 9C and light cool blonde on everything else that's not in the foil. That way this will it'll lift this a shade or two and make it a little cooler, but it'll be a nice blend. She'll still have a darker blonde through here, but it'll just take that brown off of there and give her a lot of shine. It'll make the texture of her hair even better. Uh, this coarse hair is just, sometimes it's just harder to deal with or, or uh, man, hard to manage. So the color really softens it and makes this hair even better, Kara. So you know the difference when your hair does have color on it. It likes it. So what I want to do first is I'm going to put the foils right where I want them at. And looking at the haircut, you can tell, you know, you want the, the color to play up the haircut and go with it. So I know that I want to keep this really blonde. So even right here in the front, I'm going to put a few little foils right here at the part. In the longest part, I'm going to foil. Everything else will be covered with that 9C. So I'm going to start right here, right at her hairline, because this is what we want the blondest, and this is the longest part. So I'm going to go in and take a nice section on a diagonal. This piece, I'm going to actually take a slice out. So we want this a little stronger right here. And I left one little fringe out there in front of this, just because it'll have a nice blend there. Now, you see that nice section I did nice and wide? You see the little tips there that were already blonde? So we're going to give her some great vanilla blonde highlights. Very pale. I'm using All Nutrients Blue Powder Lightener with 20 volume. So you get nice, nice lift. And the hair feels fabulous after using this lightener. We mix up an oil in the color. And it really helps give her a conditioning treatment as it lightens. So it's really great for the hair. Taking another nice wide section there, a slice, no little weaving strands because this hair is so dense and thick and I want this to be the blondest part. Tilt your head down a little bit, Carol, huh? You can see how nice and wide this strand uh, this section is. And we want to get it nice and bold in the front. I want this really blonde in the front. So I'm brushing this on. I'm using a, I love using a knife. I feel like I have a little more control over the hair color with the knife. Um, I get nice and close to the roots. And then you don't oversaturate the section. You know, using the knife, you use less product. And you get it right where you want it at. I'm taking another section right here. I'm going right behind these two. Still on a diagonal. Still slicing. You can see I've got a nice thick strand here. And this is a thicker section. Right here is very dense right here. So now I'm taking, I'm painting this on from roots to ends. This area right here has no color left on the ends. So I'm painting the entire section. I'm basically lightening the longest part of her hair, and then the rest I will cover with the 9C. Now, I'm going to go to this side of the hair. I'm going to go to work on this side because I want to get really close to this little, she's got some kind of little crazy palette here. I want to make sure I get right at the root there. And look how she's really like a dark blonde, light brown, so this will really lighten nice. That hair goes there. I'm going to do the same thing right here. Slice the section close to the roots there, close to the hairline, I mean. We're going to get it nice and solid here. Once I put the foils in here, I'll go ahead and paint the rest of the hair with the 9C and 20 volume and let this all process together. Then I'll shape this haircut. And this is a great case of a little bit off making a huge difference. Kara's hair is already very short. And having the length in the front does give it a little more of a versatile look because she's got this long fringe in the bang in the front, so that bang really plays up the front here. So what's nice is I'm going to leave every bit of this length in the front, and then I'm going to take the neckline and her sides a little closer, still leaving it fringy and soft, not severe, but very close. 
You see I'm brushing that through there. And maybe one or two more, and I've got her blonde in. I still have a little long length here I can foil. Still weaving and slicing, not weaving. Slicing sections because we want nice bold blonde here. Oops, dump it oh yeah, that's a good one. Moving right along. Put you a little bit more gray. I'm working my way to the back here, and I'm just working on an angle, almost in the way that her hair grows or the way that it's going to fall. So now I'm going to do a little wider section, not so close together because we're getting into shorter hair. Still slicing though, but just a little further apart. And this hair, I'm going to cut hairs with it, our sharp tooth razor. It's ideal for this texture. It'll give her lots of fringy, PC ragged edges. So on this thick, wavy hair, it responds really well. It gives her that very jagged edge without a lot of work and without a lot of product on that hair. It will be much easier to work with because it cuts it as it texturizes. So you're not using uh, a lot of product to do that. Work. You're actually cutting the shape of with the razor, and it does work great. You can see where I'm at right now. I'm almost to the very crown, and I'm going to put maybe two more here, and then I'm going to put her face color on. And I'll put that on everything that's not in the foil. And it's 9C, light cool on in the all nutrient. And I actually mixed oil in that too, so even her base color will give her hair just bright moisture and shine. Lots of shine in the hair. You know how this coarser curly hair is hard to get shine in it, even when it's very healthy. So her hair likes the hair color. One more right here in the crown, just on the very top here. I'll tilt your head back a little bit for me, sweetie. Now, one left here. And then I'm going to do the rest of the color. This will process for 30 minutes. I'll shampoo it all, and you get to see me cut her hair. I'm going to give her a cut with a sharp tooth razor. Now I've got everything foiled up where I want the blonde. All of this is going to be super close, and I'll do that in our scissor rubber comb or with my sharp tooth. I'll leave the edges nice and soft. Not severe, so it'll still look soft and feminine, but still edgy and young. Modern. And then we've got our color mixed. And I love this cream developer with our color. This is tube color. It's very thick. And applying it with a brush, I mean, you could put it in a bottle, but I just feel more like an artist putting it on like I'm painting. So, and it is very creative, and I feel like I have a little more control over it. So, whatever way you like to do it. This is just my favorite way. I'm going to brush it on roots to end. I'm actually starting in the back, just in the crown. I'll work my way down, just because I want a little more head start on that. Oops. A little more head start on that part. Oops. It's sliding easily there. And it's so easy just to paint around the foils. I'm going to save this for the last because I'm going to get all of her the bottom on. Oops, fold it up. Make it stay. There you go, out of the way. And paint this. This is a very cool shade. So it'll be great on her base. I'll cut some of the gold through the red to give it still a little warmth to it. It looks so good. But it'll be a great blend with the blonde. Phenomenal. I mean, she can walk in and say, oh, wow. And I mix two ounces just because this is very thick, very dense hair. So I want to make sure I get good coverage, nice and even. I'm brushing it on real quickly. Really working fast to get it on. It does make a difference. Now you can see where the edges are pretty good, much lighter. So this would be great. Once I cut this shorter, this will even look lighter because it's just so super thick. It always looks darker when it's this thick. And when it's nice and close, and her hair right lays really right close right. to her head, it James, really yeah, just, just loves to be short. Yes, you see how nice and thick this hair color is. It's almost luxurious on the hair. It just feels fabulous. It leaves the hair almost just in such great shape. Even after one application, you can tell the difference in this coarser, drier hair is just in much better shape. I am working my way right around here. I'm working underneath the coils, lifting this up and saturating these roots. Getting it on quickly, and then I'll do a little massage. Make sure I get it covered thoroughly, just to make sure I didn't miss any hair. 
And then once I get this all applied, we'll process her and you will see me cutting the hair. And I'll finish her with the flat iron and I'll do a little tweaking, just a little adjusting. Um, you know, it's always good to do after you cut and smooth the hair, got the wrinkles out, and really see the true shape of it. And so many times this hair shrinks up, so you've got to be careful not to cut it too short because you do want to be able to have a little wiggle room there to tweak a little bit more if you need. You see them to the back now. Just working this through. Quickly, quickly working fast. That way it's already had a head start here. They're all processed together. Working my way right on down. This hair doesn't look that long, but it's really thick. And it's going to do really nice cut in close. Because I'm going to give her a little bit better shape in the back here on her neckline. Coming to the end, Kara. Now, got this covered. Rub that in, make sure I didn't miss anything. It's so nice and short there, it's easier. Tilt your head back a little bit for me, sweetie. Now, I'm going to go right in between the foils here and brush on the rest. Just work your way right around them. Very, very easy and quickly. It all processes together it makes it so easy. And it's quick. You know, we do this technique so many ways on shorter hair, longer hair. Uh, low lighting, high lighting, it's just, it's just such a great business where you can be creative. So, and sharing's wonderful. So this is coming to the end here. See, brushing all of that on. That was that little section that I left out right at her hairline. Brush that on. Coming to the end. Now we're going to go to this side here. I've got you covered here. If you start processing in just a minute, lift that up, saturate that throw in between. Work your way right up there. Now, the last foil pair in there. We have a foil mohawk. Really dab that color in there. Good. Saturate. Don't miss up spot, especially this little hairline here. Some of these hairline hairs are hard to see when they're nice and light. She's got great eyebrows. We'll leave those eyebrows alone, Kara. Those look great. No color on those. Now, I've got her covered. I'm going to process and we'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> We're back. I've got Kara's color done. What I'm going to do now is see, you can already see this nice blonde around the face. But I'm going to start with haircut, and what I want to do is I want to show you the shape I want to do. Look at this great profile. What's really going to make a difference in her cut is I'm taking this in closer, because this was cut super short in the crown. I don't want to cut that much shorter. I might rag that a little bit with my, my uh, razor here. It's got not much of a curve in here. So I'm on the flat side. So I want to give her a nice silhouette. I want to take this in closer and leave some of this. Not cutting a lot off in that crown, but taking this in closer through the sides and just doing a little bit of razoring through that longer bang is going to really make a big difference in her cut. So what I want to do first is I'm going to section off the area that I know I want short and the area that I know I want long. I'm going to comb it out of the way. Doing it this way, I feel like I know the shape, I, I have a goal, I know what I want to do, so then I have a plan. And once you have a plan, well, then it just goes much easier. You can see when I like to measure the head, you see where the comb leaves the head, tells you the flatter area, and then our head starts to round. So that tells me I want it nice and close here, and leave the length there. This will be a nice silhouette. The same thing in the back. You see where the comb leaves the head is where that area gets flatter and it starts to round. So we want to leave that longer. Same thing over here. I'm carving out the area that I want short. You can see where the comb leaves the head. It's always right here at the temple. Some, some people have you know, a larger area or a smaller area depending on the shape of their head. So that's what you go by. And I just think it gives it a nice shape. It's a nice balance when you measure and get your areas the shorter areas, 
where you want it flat and the area where you want it fuller. So here we go. We've got everything just carved out here where I'm going to go shorter and then my length. A little bit more right in here. Because short hair makes such a statement and if this doesn't have the right shape in it, you really have to struggle with the haircut. And it's not like you can flip up and hide it. You have to live with what it's like. So this is just a great way to measure and get a good proportion on the shape you want to show. Shape you want to do. So now I know where I want this hair shorter at. So I'm going to go right in here. Actually, I'm going to do this scissor over comb because this is super short already. And I want this nice and close. But I will razor that top with my sharp tooth. So I'm going to go right in here, lift this hair up, and take the excess off. Lifting up and cutting, and then when that hair falls, you have a nice soft little fringe, and yet you get the closeness where the hair just hugs the head. That's what you want, and especially this textured hair really lays nice. You can see what this, um, the 9C did. It definitely lifted her up two shades at least, and having it the cool shade, it definitely toned this gold, but, yes, it, but yet it still has some warmth to it. So it's not brassy, but it's going to be a great complement to the highlights that I put in there. And you can see as I go in closer, how nice that really hugs her head when this is close. Um, the razor couldn't quite get this close. I can get a little bit better shape with my scissor over comb. And even with Kara's neckline, you see how it grows low and it's very soft. So that's a great thing. We want to keep that soft there. Right in front of this ear here, you can see all the little curly texture in her hair. Her hair really definitely smooths out nice when it's shorter. So she's got great texture in here. I'm still going right here in front of the ear, lifting and taking it off, lifting up and out. That way you're leaving the little fringe soft and I'm taking the weight out. I'm going to go to this side so you can see a little bit better. Yes. Now, I'm getting around her ear here. Same thing. I lift this up and take this excess off. So that way you're taking that middle area out and leaving some ragged edges so that looks soft. Already it's a shade lighter. Just cutting this in closer where you can see that it's not so thick. Lifting and taking off. Really cutting in as close to Jennifer. Lifting this up, going with the way her hair grows, and cutting it with the growth, which that makes such a difference. Even lifting this neckline, I cut on a diagonal. That way it just has such a nice flow. Uh, you don't see scissor marks in here. Cutting it at an angle like this really just oops, tapers this nicely. And it just blends good. You can see as I work my way up, I can lift out. Leaving a little length. Nice shape. Already it makes her head look a little rounder. Just a little nicer silhouette. So now I'm here. I've just about worked my way, you know, all the way around. I've got a little to check there. But see, after taking off that, she had a straight line here. And now the neckline just kind of just disappears and it looks soft. Even though it's super short, it doesn't look extreme or masculine. It still looks soft. I'm going to go right around the ear. Take a little excess that tends to hide behind the ear there. You know, once I dry this, I'll look at this. I know there's a little hair on her neck I need to clean up. And I don't want to cut this straight across or leave a line in here. I'd rather have that a little jagged or just kind of ragged on the ends. So here we go. Now I've got the neckline and the sides done. Yeah, and right here at the temple, you can see that little texture that has a little more tighter curl. Take that in a little closer because it'll lay really nice when this hair comes down over it. Right here in front of the ear, I'm cleaning that up. These little sideburns are nice because they're wispy, but they're not thick, so they'll lay down. Now, same thing over here, Kara. Still need a little fringe in front of the ear. Now. I've got the neckline and the sides cut. See, there's a little curly spot. I want to lift that take that off just a little closer. Look how nice that lays there. Now, we've got the finished length on these sides. 
And now what this really did is it made the top look longer. And the top is nice having this length on it, but already now having this closeness in here is just a better balance. It's going to give her hair just a little newer shape without cutting a lot of hair off. Now, you can see she's got this cut to the side, which I like. I'm going to bring this over and take a little, just there, so we have a little shorter, shorter to long. And this would be her hanging length here. Now, you can already see the highlighting there. We're going to leave this. This is coming over a little bit, and that is okay. Because that was the, exactly what we want. Now, I'm going to take the razor, and we're going to go in here and take a little bit of the weight out of this top and these sides. You can see that little bit of that weight line that built up just from me cutting the underneath and then pulling that down. So I'm going to go right in here to the side, lift this out, and I'm going to just razor the edge. Razoring that edge just takes a little of that weight out without taking all the length off. And you can see I just converge it and take it off, and it's coming off just the edges there. Just so that's a little, removes a little more bulk right there. And I, I do like the shape that looks a little, definitely asymmetric shape, but even a little more so, taking that in a little closer. Now I'm just going to work my way around. Anything that's coming over, once you see it's not going to be anything reaching there. This, I think, was so super short that I'm not going to cut into that. That was good. That actually is going to make the shape of her head just a little nicer from her profile. Um, you get to this side, you see nothing coming off of this. What I really want to use on this razor is to break up the top because the top was cut blunt and it was cut short. So I don't want to really make it shorter, just a little more jagged. So it'll cut into this and just make it more uneven because that's what we want. See, I'm converging it right here, going right in with the sharp tooth and razoring out the ends. I go right in front of that, pull another section back to that because we want to keep the length, but yet we want to break this up and have a little more pieciness, a little spikiness, make this hair look a little uneven, which is a good thing. I'm going to converge this side to here because we're going to go from shorter to longer. So we want to bring everything to this point. This works well if you want to do a longer version, maybe a shorter version of this, but keeping the length of the bangs really gives this haircut just a little more modern look. Bringing everything back, jagging those ends with the razor, make them very, oops, very piecey and ragged. Still keeping her length. This I feel like was a little heavy care and that could actually have a little more razoring in it. So I'm going to bring this to the side, not all the way to the back, but to the side and bring a little more weight out. It'll layer this front a little bit shorter, a little bit more. Just fabulous, perfect. I mean, this short hair makes such a statement, and it really you got to have the, the guts to wear it because it is it's short, and you got to have the confidence. And Kara definitely has it. Now let me ask you something Are you is this being filmed right now? Yes, yes, this is for my video. So she's a great model to show this cut. I know, and Kara's 14. I mean, this cut is ideal really on any shaped face, especially a round or a square face, does well with this close on the sides and long on the top. It's just a nice balance. It creates an oval, and that's the shape that's ideal. That shape can wear anything. And you see this nice, I mean, she's got a, a, almost a square shaped face, so it's really flattering on her. Now, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna dry it. We'll check it out here dry. And I'll do a little bit more tweaking, but not much. This is what people want to see when they see me dry in here. I think this would be the easy thing. <laughs> but she's got lots of texture in her hair, so. Even using a flat iron will help smooth it and really check the cut good. But she could easily let her hair air dry and have just some really messy, just lots of texture in here and kind of encourage that. 
Now you see the blonde coming out. works great when you flat iron. This is our uh, spray and play fast drying finishing spray. And I'm putting on just a nice layer of spray on here before I flat iron because I want this hair to really be smooth when I flat iron it and it helps hold the shape really well when you use a little finishing spray. So I'm going to start right here on the crown. I almost want to flat iron it just how I cut it, how she's going to wear it. So I'll go in that same direction that I cut it and how I want this hair to stand up in the crown. I want this to be really PC. And after using that spray on there, it just makes the hair manageable and it just responds really well. So taking small sections and flat ironing it up and out because we don't want curly ends in this haircut. We want the ends to be really PC. And you see the razoring immediately on the ends when you smooth it out. I mean, her hair looked good dried with a brush. But I just want to make it just another step above that and make it just a little more modern. I, she's young. She can wear her hair a little edgier. I think, like I said, even though she's 14, this is ideal on really any age. I think you want your hair to look modern. And if you look younger, that's even a better plus. But that's what we, uh, that's what I like to do is make the hair look modern. You want to look young. And modern, anything matronly or old just looks old-fashioned. So just because you're a certain age doesn't mean you can't flat iron your hair and spike it up. Because lots of women need this, Carol. See, now I'm going right in the, with the direction that I cut it. That's how I want it to fall. And that's how I will check it. Smoothing, you see immediately how the haircut looks so different when you smooth out these ends. Now you see all this nice ragged PC, just these jagged layers. I did very little on the with the razor, but the little bit I did, I did it in the right spot. She didn't need it all over. She needed it just in the crown where her hair was just the bulkiest at. And even going in through the bangs, it took some weight out of her bangs without making her hair too short in the front. It kind of retained the length and that doesn't look bulky. So you can have that without having thick, heavy hair. I see a little ends there I want to snip on. I think putting the texturizing um, product or pomade is really wonderful for the hair because it really gives it that PC. See what I'm doing right here? It's just a few little edges that were ragged, just a little too ragged. I had to snip those off. This is the time that once you've smoothed it, you check the haircut and you really see what more you want to do to the hair. And like I said, it's almost like a little insurance policy. You allow enough hair that you can still work on the hair. You don't want to cut it so short that 
Well, then it's too short. You have to let it grow. So just be careful. I think it's always good to see the hair dry before you start cutting and finishing. Um, already you can see the color is just so nice and bright. Now I'm just going back with my little tiny shears, just tweaking a little bit. You can see as I turn her this way, nice and close. There's a little bulky spot still there, and I'm going to use these little thinning shears just here, just to lift and just really take that little bit of that weight out of there. Already that worked with just a couple little snips of that. You can see that really made that a little shorter and a little more blended. So now the hair won't look bulky when it grows out. But what a difference in her color. Touch your head down here for me. Uh, the color really lifted this neckline where it was so dark. She was a level six back here. And I knew it wasn't going to lift it as blonde as the front. And I, I didn't want it as blonde as the front. But now this is nice because it just has a nice blend with the highlight that I put in the front. And next time Kara comes in, I do the same thing. I'd weave in her foils on the top and paint everything else with the with the um, 9C, with the color uh, on the roots, and easy. I'm going right in here just so there's no weight line in there where her hair is just a little heavy. And you can't see that until you've dried it. So this is the time you do the tweaking. After it's been smooth, you smooth all the wrinkles out, you check it out. Already you can see now we've got a nice blend. Now, Kara, let's check this out. I feel like maybe a few pieces in the top, not a lot, but when you pull everything together and just go in in one section, we'll keep your length, but yet take a little bit more weight out. Now, let's dry this a little bit already. She is loving her hair from a fabulous look off of her face. Love the little kids. But even with this, this short, it's still going to be very versatile. Your hair will look great kicked up. I know we've done it like that before. And it is definitely a statement do when you do it like that. Actually, let's take this little thing off here so we can see you better. You've got a cute top on. Thank you. Let's take this off, and we're going to put a little Max Wax on it. Pull oh, this really like your camera. This is our pomade that we love. You can see it's kind of a waxy, it's a thicker pomade. Um, it doesn't have uh, any hold to it, uh, like a stiff spray, but what it does is it clumps the hair together, and it separates. So if you don't get it messy enough with the dryer or the flat iron, work your product through there just to make that hair a little piecier and a little more separated, because then you really see the haircut. Really, what I did is I put a film on my hands, and then I just blot it on there or work it through. And it's all about using your hands and just playing with it, seeing where you want to put that at. And then it gives it hold without being stiff like a spray because it clumps the hair together and it gives it that shape. It really makes the hair messier. So, and plus ours gives it shine and it does give the hair that volume and that body where you wanted that without putting a lot of spray on it. Now you can see that I've got her cut shorter in the crown and when I dried it I just made it really piecey and sticking up because we want it to be messy. But already see her little shape of her head looks like her head's rounder. And her head was a little flat there, but she's so cute. Not anymore, but even playing with this hair, this haircut, like I said, is still very versatile. She can do this with a little curl in it. You could do this back off your face for a very dramatic look. So it's really a great cut, and you look fabulous. I'm so glad you let me use you for a model today. And thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks. You look great, Carol. She looks so Isn't she adorable? Great. She's got a beautiful profile.